Hit subscribe to the DIY Writer to support your hardworking authors and also lessen your chances of ending up as a victim in their next book. The world's largest UFO conference, Contact in the Desert, announces the launch of their eighth annual and very first virtual event. This event is focusing on UFOs in the year of science, also consciousness in the future. This will be held June 24th through 28th, 2021. Contact in the Desert is renowned for its top lineup of experts in the fields of ufology, forbidden archaeology, government disclosure, alien phenomenon, crop circles, and much more. Contact in the Desert already is the largest UFO conference in history and will now be the largest UFO conference in the virtual world. With over 60 lectures, 40 workshops, 11 panels, featured speakers presentations, virtual tours to Giant Rock, and other interactive events. Go to contactinthedesert.com for more information and get your tickets now. That's Jeff with the DIY Writer Podcast. Today, we have kind of a cool treat, you know? Um, we got somebody who's written uh, more than five books, more than 10 books. Um, actually, I, I stopped counting at 10 because I only had eh, 10 fingers. Anyway, uh, Sydney Beaupre, how are you today? Fine, thanks. How are you? I'm doing all right. I'm doing all right. So, you have a new book that just came out. I do. Impure. Mm -hmm. And we were both kind of joking around a little bit that you released a book titled Impure on Valentine's Day. <laughs> I know. Isn't that funny? It's perfect. <laughs> perfect. It's a perfect depiction of what the, uh, you know, the holiday is all about, kind of. Yeah, pretty much. All right. <sighs> Hallmark did well. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so what can you tell us about your book? Well, I can tell you it's about supernatural beings. Um, essentially, it's a world where supernatural people are outlawed. They're sent to asylums. And um, okay. essentially, the main character is trying to avoid being sent to an asylum. Oh. So they're just kind of marked crazy and thrown into a uh, some sort of a camp? Exactly. Huh. Sounds kind of like America right now. Yeah. Uh, and you're actually up in Quebec, right? Yes, I am. Oh, how's, how are things up there? I heard it's uh, bright and cheery. Well, there was a protest a few days ago. Um, they set fire in the old port of Montreal. No, so was, really? There was, there was a huge fire. Um, they are protesting the 8 o'clock p.m. curfew. Oh, yeah. Oh, I didn't hear that. I was I was too busy watching uh, Minneapolis, uh, Minnesota burn. Oh gosh, yeah, the peaceful riots. Anyway, so they they uh, they started the port on fire. Mm -hmm. uh, because of the eight o'clock curfew. Yeah, awesome. <clears throat> I think we're gonna see a lot more of that kind of stuff. Oh yeah, definitely. Which is kind of interesting. I I think it's really interesting that. <clears throat> you know, we write stuff like that and think, oh, this will never happen. And then it happens. <laughs> it's all of a sudden like, oh, wow. Okay. So where do we go from here as far as writers go? How do you step this stuff up? I have no idea, to be honest with you. We, I mean, I, I keep making stuff up and then it happens and I'm like, <sighs> <laughs> okay. biting my nails. <laughs> yeah. Uh <laughs> Yeah, you can't do the aliens anymore. I, I, did you see the release on that? No. Uh, from the U.S. Uh, Air Force, evidently, they have a nice video of a uh, flying saucer. And they're like, we can't explain this. And it's part of this, you know, a declassification uh, effort we have in the United States. And it's like, yeah, we don't know what this is. And the thing just zooms around in the sky. It's like, oh, good. Great aliens, 2021. Yeah, you know, every movie I've seen, that always works out really well. <laughs> Yeah, it's kind of scary. So how are you doing with, uh, I mean, you're, you're locked down up there, right? We are. Yeah. Can't really go anywhere. Um, I mean, well, you can, you can go outside, but um, you can't go to the movies. You can't go to restaurants. Um, everywhere is pretty much locked down. 
So you kind of just stay in your house and hope that it'll eventually go away. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Is it, uh, is it really bad up there as far as the COVID goes or? I think we're around, uh, <clears throat> I'm not sure the numbers, but it's pretty bad. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, uh, you know, I, <clears throat> The, uh, the the amount of people that have been affected by this, either by getting it or, you know, being locked down, losing your job, you know, the lack of income, I mean, the, the effects of this whole thing are going to ripple through every society for years and years and years. It's going to take a long time to recover. Yes, it will. It's yeah. a very serious thing. Yeah. So have you had, uh, have you had any problems? I mean, uh, writing? during all this nope no nope. it's given me more time to write i mean i have nowhere to be <laughs> <laughs> so um i had nowhere to be before the pandemic but even, <laughs> more, even more so now well it's, it's kind of a trip when you uh you know you want to take a break and you want to go like to a coffee shop or something like that or you know I just can. yeah yeah you, you know everything's closed and it's it's a struggle yep. to find you know just a you know, anything to hang out with. I mean, at one point in time, um, last year, you couldn't even go to a dang park. And it's like, are you serious? You know, the city had closed them down here. And it's like, you know, we're boneheaded Americans. So we're like, yeah, we're going to the park anyway. Shut up. We own it. You know? Yeah. People here did the same thing. People yeah. went to parks when they were closed here. And I was like, <gasps> yeah, you know, the rules, there's really this gray area, you know, you have the rule, and then you have what you want to do. And then, you know, you just kind of, anyway, do what you want to do, right? <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. Pretty yeah, much. Right. <laughs> so um, what else you got going on? What do I have going on? Wow. My life is very boring. <laughs> what? Um, no, I have, I have a few uh, books that I'm writing. Yeah. Um, well, I saw you had one come out in January too of this year. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'll have to scroll down to get to that one. I'm sorry. Uh, such an exquisite calamity part two. Yes. Oh boy. Spencer and Caden, what are they getting into? They're getting into some stuff. They're at a new school. Uh, let's see. I'm terrible at explaining. So I have to also scroll to get to it. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. That's all right. So do you write full time? Is that what you do for a living or what do you, uh, what do you do? Well, essentially for now I write full time. I'm unemployed. Okay. What'd so, you do before that? I was a student. Oh, cool. Mm -hmm. What are you studying? I studied literature at John Abbott college. And then I also studied uh, nursing assistants at West Island career center. Okay. Are you kind of glad that you're not a nursing assistant? <laughs> <laughs> yes. I'm glad that I, um, fun story, when I was doing my uh, stage for a nursing assistance, um, the opportunity to go to Nashville for a book signing came up. And so I went to that instead of completing my stage. So I never finished the nursing assistance course because I was like, I would rather go do author stuff. Sure. <laughs> totally get that. So you got to do a book signing in Nashville? I did. what did you think of Nashville? It was awesome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So did you go down to the street where all the bars were and and uh, do a little honky tonk? I did not. What? I was too nervous. Oh, that's the best. That's the best place to be on a Friday night. I know. Well, let let's talk. Let's just imagine the pandemic's not here, and mm -hmm. you know there's no there's no COVID. But on a on a normal Friday night, you just walk down there. There's so many live bands, and I mean it's just so much fun. Wow. Yeah, you. Um, we uh, we park at a. Uh, I can't, I think it's Cumberland Park. Mm -hmm. I think, and then you uh, go up an elevator and you walk across this bridge. It goes across the river, and the bars are right at the bottom of this bridge. And you just take a right and you just walk down, and it's just it's beautiful. It's a lot of fun. That's but awesome. I think the funnest, the neatest thing was like they have these these tractors that pull these party wagons. What? Oh, yeah, it's it you know. So I mean, there there it looks like a you know kind of like a hay wagon, kind mm -hmm. of. But you know they've got the lights and they've got the music going on and and they've got all these different vehicles that are, are pulling things or people are jumping in the back or you know there's like these uh, 
you know, vans that people jump into that, uh, you know, they're just, I mean, they're just, they're, everybody's having such a good time. I mean, that's, that's, I don't know, but. That sounds so fun. It was, it was, whole, I mean, it, it was fun to watch. It, mm-hmm. It's just awesome. But anyway, so he went there for a book signing. I'm sorry. I'm talking too much. That's okay. No, you're not. <laughs> oh, okay. So was it like a big, uh, was it event? I mean, was it a big event that, uh, you know, a bunch of authors or, I mean, what was it? Yeah, event? it was a huge event called Utopia Con. Oh. Um, and uh, it was a lot of um, dystopian authors. It was a lot of uh, young adult authors. It was really, it was huge. Yeah. At least in my opinion, it was huge. It was my first convention. <laughs> <laughs> very cool uh, you know when i think of dystopian i always think of margaret atwood mm-hmm. every time um and just a side note april 28th the uh, on hulu the uh, next season of uh the hand uh the handmaid's tale is uh is coming out <clears throat> Ooh, exciting i know it's been so long i know originally i had read that they're gonna release it last june mm-hmm. <clears throat> because of june you know, the character. Yeah. And I thought, oh man, this is going to be so cool. And then the pandemic happened and then it didn't happen. It's like, damn it. Yeah. But I'm glad they're not waiting until June again. It's April 28th. Cool. Eight central time. Woo-hoo. I have something to look forward to. It's a pretty, it's a pretty good series. I mean, it's, it's a good book, but um, don't get me wrong. I like the book, but uh, or books, there's two of them. Yes. I do. Uh, I, I do so like the uh, what they've done with it in that series. I mean, it's just it's it's pretty awesome. But I'm also kind of a fan of uh, Margaret Atwood just because she's just this cranky old lady that wrote a bunch of books and yeah, you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I just for some reason I just like her just because she's you know she just seems like she's a crabby old lady. And it's like I just like her. I yeah. know she does seem like a crabby old lady. But, uh, you know, I, it, she's done a lot of wonderful things. Don't get me wrong. But I mean, I just, her demeanor is just like, yeah, I just, I don't know. I just think she's cool. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> I don't know. Probably starstruck. I don't know. So anyway, you have such an exquisite calamity that we're going to be talking about. Mm-hmm. That came out, the second, the part two came out uh, January 26th. Yep. Part one came out uh, eh, less than a year earlier in May. A little bit. Yeah. So what can you tell us, tell us about that? Which one? Part one? Uh, just, just a series, just an overall uh, uh, overview of the series. Well, it's about uh, two characters, Spencer and Caden. They're um, best friends and eventually lovers. Okay. <laughs> um, they're two, I, terrible at explaining. <laughs> they are two of a, two of a kind, I should say. Um in this world there are creatures called casters and they okay. have familiars okay. and um spencer and caden are both caster and familiar so they're they are both um hybrids hybrids oh cool and they uh their birth falls under a prophecy of the lovers okay the tarot card the lovers all right and um it's essentially them figuring out how to go about uh, awakening for the prophecy. Cool. So um, the one thing I read about uh, uh, your books, they're all, they all have a uh, L- LGBTQ um, uh, tone in them, right? Most of them do, yeah. Do all your books do that? or? No, not all of them. I don't think Dark One does. Oh, doesn't? Okay. My first book. Cool. Are you just out of curiosity? Are you going to be at a, a, a Karis? Am I going to be what? Pardon? At at the uh, virtual uh, book con, uh, I Karis book con. I do not think so. What? I want to be. Why don't I just you? Heard about it now. I don't know how to sign up. Oh, you know, I will send you the uh, the links to it. So a sure. friend of mine, JP Jackson, who mm-hmm. is a uh, um, an author. It, it's it's all queer book authors. Oh. and they're all getting together and, and promoting each other's books and it, it's gonna be a big deal um yeah. on saturday i'm gonna be talking about uh podcasts and and uh they they invited me so i'm like the token uh 
uh, straight guy, I guess. I don't know, whatever. <laughs> but um, um, we're going to be talking about podcasting and, and uh, video logging or vlogging, you know, and uh, and just some different things about that. So it'll be, I mean, when I, they sent me the agenda and mm -hmm. it is, you know, I don't, I don't care if you're right that way or not. It is a great conference. They have That's a lot awesome. of really good authors coming up and, and speaking at this thing. So it's, it's, it's fairly cheap. I think it's mm. not, uh, it's not real expensive. So, but it's all virtual of course. Yeah. You know, but uh, I I've been to a couple of virtual conferences and they actually kind of work out. Okay. You know, I've been to one. Yeah. I can't remember what it was called. <laughs> <laughs> Did you like it? I did. I really liked it a lot. I think it was a fantasy one. Yeah. I went, I went to one on uh, advertising, Amazon advertising. Mm. Oh, cool. How'd that go? And it was, and the reason I bring it up is because it was the best one I've ever been at as far as a virtual one. Mm -hmm. It was um, the people that organized it. It was with uh, Brian uh, Cohen. Mm -hmm. And uh, <clears throat> They uh, they split everybody off into groups, you know. So they had one main presentation. It was a small group, but and then they uh, um, it was supposed to be down in Chicago face to face. Then of course the pandemic happened, and yeah, it didn't happen. And right. they did such a good job of lining people up, and then and then putting people in in their that were you know close to the same genre in these smaller groups. They mm -hmm. break them off for discussion, and then the main speaker would pop in and answer questions. Mm -hmm. And it was just like yeah, it was so well organized. It was um, you know because sometimes you go to those conferences, and you know there's this mob of people, and you're trying to fight through, and then you know quite get to talk to the people you want to or whatever. This yeah. you had the attention of the of the speaker, and you're actually asking questions, and That's you get cool. to know them a little bit more. And it's like you know you didn't you didn't feel like you had to chase them down, tackle them, and then talk to them. Yeah, trying to you know make it to the bathroom or something like that. So I mean, it was it it, it was uh, it, it was the best virtual conference I'd I'd seen yet. So. Hmm. But uh, I will send you the links to uh, the uh, Icarus um, thing. You. It's May 8th, 9th, May 8th, I think. I will definitely uh, try to sign up for that. Yeah, I would because you're going to, there's, uh, you know, there's book publishers there. There's, there's people that have been in the industry a lot. There's a lot of people that have put up with a lot of shit because of what they write. They're mm -hmm. going to be talking about it. I mean, there's a, it's, it's just, you know, I, I really can't wait to see it just because it's, uh, it'll be interesting. Yeah. It'll be interesting. So um, aside from that and, and that shameless self plug on myself, because I'll be there speaking. Um, <laughs> I know. Um, what else you got going on? Well, as I mentioned, I'm writing a few different stories. There's one called Covenant. Um, it's uh, set in a dystopian world where... Um, People have this thread that's wrapped around their pinky. They're meant to keep it. It's supposed to, um, when they die, go into a tapestry. And once the tapestry is finished, um, there's supposed to be a requiem that happens. And unfortunately, as all dystopians, you know, it's a lie. Mm -hmm. And um, also in this story, people wear clothing made out of their own human hair. <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah. I know, it's weird. It is a weird story. I'm sorry. I mean, I just pause. Did she just say their own hair? Okay. Yeah. Their own hair. They take vitamins to grow their hair and they make clothing out of their hair. Unfortunately, I'd be naked in that dystopian society. <laughs> well, the vitamins would make your hair grow. No, it wouldn't. I've no, tried them. I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. No. <laughs> I'd be that outcast. Oh my God, he's got no clothes. I'm like, Get her out from here. <laughs> But uh, no, nah. yeah, no, nah. no, that wouldn't help. Well, that sounds really cool. It sounds really cool. So what else you got going on? Mm, let me think. I don't. This is all about you, Sydney. You got to give me something here. <laughs> ah, it's so nerve wracking. I know it's horrible. Let me see. Let me go into my Microsoft Word. I'm writing um, a children's book called Buddy with my grandmother. She's 81 years old. Yeah. Um, it's about an autistic little boy. Oh. Um, it's his everyday life. Yeah. 
Um, so far, I have uh, two chapters. Cool. Cool. I uh, um, a friend of mine wrote a uh, uh, a really good book, um, uh, Rachel Renner, about mm -hmm. uh, somebody who had uh, epilepsy. Oh, cool. And when they had seizures, um, uh, magic would happen. And it, mm -hmm. it, it's a pretty cool book. That is, sounds really cool. It is really cool. But uh, I love, I love the way people come up with ideas. Like, you know, everybody's got to wear clothes made of their own hair. I, you know, that's just funny. Mm -hmm. Or the tapestry. So, so what happens, you know, when the, when the tapestry gets done or what's supposed to happen? I'm not entirely sure yet. Okay. And that's cool. I know I did. I have about 15 chapters written. Yeah. Um, so I have the bones of it. Um, but I don't really know what's supposed to happen yet. <laughs> okay. Well, you know, that's fine. It's not written yet. It's not yeah. done. It's a, it's a work in progress. <laughs> it's a work in progress. I can tell you're from Quebec progress. <laughs> it's a process. Anyway, <laughs> Sorry. My accent. I make. Do I sound French to you? What's that? Do I sound French to you? Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> Not much, but a little bit. I mean, you kind of, you kind of got that, uh, that Canadian swagger with a little bit of French uh, in my ear. But you know, I'm, I'm kind of goofy about that kind of stuff. I've been told that I sound French. So, I've been told by French people that I sound English, and by English people that I sound French. Really. So everybody's, you're confusing everybody. Perfect place to be when you're an author. It's the Montreal accent. Is it? It is. Oh. Um, question for you. Uh, so you've written an awful lot of books. Have you, uh, have you seen this new thing that's coming up by Amazon called Vela? I have not. Oh. I would, I would think based on what I'm seeing here and what you've written that that would be something you would, uh, you get into. What is it? Oh, it's, um, so you know how you have KU, mm -hmm. you know, and you have, you can do eBooks and paper books and everything else. They have a new platform that they just released, um, that, uh, allows you to do serials. Oh, cool. Yeah. So up to 5,000 words per document or per, cool. uh, per episode. And it's a, uh, it's a purely mobile app, but they buy tokens, mm -hmm. uh, for so many words. So I think one token equals a hundred words or something like that. So it cost them, you know, uh, 50 tokens to uh, do a, to read 5,000 words, but right. you can release it as a serial instead oh, yeah. of just an entire book, you know, in, in chunks at a time. So it looks to me like, you know, if you had a bunch of, uh, you know, like if you finished a chapter, you could mm -hmm. go ahead and release that in this, in this uh, program. Mm -hmm. and then finish up another chapter, release another one and, and kind of do a serialized, uh, you know, kind of like those guild romance novel novels used to do. They oh, yeah. realize and, and release every two weeks or something like that. They're actually putting up a whole platform for that. That's really cool. And it pays better than KU from what I see. Ooh, pays better than KU. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, in, you know, when you'd, uh, for uh, I and I don't. I'm not going to put any numbers out there. But you, what it looks like is you get fifty percent of the of the token amount. Ooh, fifty percent. That's more than. Uh... Right. You know. So I mean, they buy. You know. Uh, so if a token's fourteen cents, you'll get seven cents for a hundred words. That's cool. You know, versus uh, half a cent for an entire page. Exactly. You know. So, I mean, it just, it looks like it, it, if you jump into it right away, it could be fairly profitable. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. I haven't seen what the advertising schemes look like yet or anything like that. Um, but I'm guessing that they're going to be pushing people to, uh, to do it since they're going to be pushing this platform, I think in 45 days from now, mm. you know, 45 so. days. Yeah. They're, cool. they're letting authors populate it with content right now. Okay. And so if you're, uh, um, if you're in there, I, I, and it looks to me like they're going to start really pushing it towards pushing the app and pushing uh, consumers to it in like 45 days, but it's called Vela, V-E-L-L-A. If you go into your KDP, um, um, your, uh, um, the, uh, the portal, 
it's in there. Oh, I'm going. I can oh, look, right look, it's really cool. It's really cool. I was so excited about it when I heard about it. I'm like, oh my God, this is so cool. <laughs> I'm definitely interested. I'll, I'll look at it later. Yeah. I don't want to waste your time looking at it now. <laughs> yeah, I, I wouldn't look at it now. Yeah, but uh, it is it is something that it you know same one cover, you know for the entire series and it just and people just subscribe to it and you know they get you know it looks like you can do the entire book on there if you wanted to. That looks really that sounds really awesome. In a series, and then I, the one part I don't know, but I think you can actually put the series out there mm-hmm. once you flush it out and it's done mm-hmm. create an ebook and a paperback and sell it on all platforms that's cool as long as you can um do that that uh you'd already have a readership like a reader following so people would want to buy you the think, i mean i i don't know it it almost <sighs> You know, I've been looking at going wide with my books and just mm-hmm. kind of getting, you know, just find Amazon. And then they came out with this. I'm like, do I do I really want to, you know, do, or do I just keep all my ducks in in uh, Amazon if they're going to be doing this kind of stuff? And it's like, mm-hmm. you know, and it, it it may purely be that they're going to try and kill everybody else and just be the only bookstore in the world, and then they'll go ahead and screw us over. But you, know, you never know. Yeah, right. You know, thank you, Audible, but uh, yeah. <laughs> do you have audiobooks out there i do not i wish i did yeah i tried to record myself reading my books but i'm so awkward that i stuttered <laughs> and uh so it, it takes me like an hour to record like a chapter oh yeah you but know, that's just I, practice I keep stopping and starting and i'm like that's just practice that's just practice yeah. if you get uh, uh an app like hindenburg it makes it much easier. Really? Yeah. I'm it's, ignorant to a lot of these things. So I'm like, ooh, you're teaching me stuff. Uh, yeah. Uh, Hindenburg is a, uh, it's a Danish piece of software. So if you have a Mac, you can, you can use GarageBand, but GarageBand is, uh, is more geared towards, um, oh, like if you're doing music. Mm-hmm. Okay, but it, it's it's a good tool to. I mean, you can certainly record yourself and enhance it and everything else. Hindenburg does is, is more for like journalists and authors, to mm-hmm. where you know it'll tune your voice and it'll it will uh, uh, take some of the uh, weird things out of it that that uh, you know to make it more normalized. And then it's got an awesome editor where you can you know take clips. You can actually stop it and say okay. I want to re-record this and then just re-record right over the top of it. And then it, it seamlessly puts it in. It does a lot of the engineering for you, which That's is awesome. like, Ooh, and then it exports to a format that, uh, they'll work for audible or, uh, or whoever else you might be using, mm-hmm. you know, if you wanted to use a, a different vendor or whatever, but I've been playing with it and it is totally cool. I haven't put out I haven't put up my audio books yet. I had mm-hmm. one out and I finally got it off of audible because mm-hmm. it was, I had to rewrite it. Um, but uh, these new audio books, yeah, it should be pretty cool, but yeah, is what it is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Anything else you want to know? Just kidding. I'm doing all the talking here. What do you, you know? I know I have no, I have no conversation topics. I'm terrible. You don't? oh man i know i'm making you do all the work that's okay you know that's that's what i'm here for <laughs> that's what i'm here for well i mean okay so why, why don't we just talk about authoring do you have any i mean do you have anything that you struggle with that maybe i could help you with or something or hmm, anything that i struggle with i'm terrible at blurbs at blurbs i'm terrible at writing blurbs oh i have to get God. other people to do it for me yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah, I get that, and that's why I hire somebody to do it. <laughs> yep, that's me too. I, I'm always like, you know what? I can't summarize my book in like a few par- paragraphs. I can't do it. I I shouldn't say I thought I was okay at it, mm-hmm. and then um, I can't remember exactly what happened, 
but I found this group again. It's one of Brian Cohen's um, I actually saw a webinar that he put on. Mm -hmm. um, and that's one of the, that's one of the things they do is they write book blurbs for people. Oh, cool. And I can't remember exactly how I got into it, but it's, I got a discount on or something like that. And so, I, oh, yeah, let's have him write one. And it's like, oh, I'm no good at this. Holy crap. <laughs> these guys are really good at it. It's like, you know, it's kind of like the difference between, you know, you can put together a cover for yourself. That's, that's all right. Mm -hmm. But if you get that one graphic designer that just kills it every time, it's like, Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm, I'm not naturally talented at this. Like you are. I'm so not. yeah, it's true. I've made a few covers. Um, and compared to the graphic designers that I hire, I'm like, Oh, Oh, Oh God. <laughs> I've had I, I've made a couple of uh, covers just for you know quick little short stories that I wanted to throw out right and you know for some reason I was under a deadline not really a deadline but you know self-imposed like I need to get this out now mm -hmm. okay and uh, so I threw it out there then I, I gave my cover to a, a designer and I said hey can you just redo this and she gave it back to me it's like oh my god that's so much better you know, <laughs> and it was, it was quick to load up or, you know, reload and everything else, but it was just like, yeah, it's easier to pay somebody, especially on Fiverr when you can find somebody good for, you know, yes. 50, 60 bucks and you know, you're done. Exactly. I get my covers off of uh, getcovers.com. Oh, do you? Yeah. How do you like them? I've never used them. They're really good. I mean, I do, I do, I have paid for expensive covers in the past for such exquisite calamity. That one was like five hundred dollars. Um, oh, yeah. But um, I find, uh, yeah, I find the quality of the covers on Get Covers. They're fantastic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hmm. I'll have to use those. Now you're teaching me. What else you got? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> no. <don't know. laughs> That's pretty cool. Um, I will actually check them out just because I've got some things coming up. But uh, you know, how much how much does the cover cost there? Five to twenty five dollars. Seriously? Seriously. And they're good. Yeah. And my cover for Impure, I got off of them. Really? Mm -hmm. <laughs> huh? I wouldn't have guessed that. Yeah, I know. All right. Well, so do you get to keep your, you know, like if you had Impure 2, would you get to uh, keep those, those same characters and redo it? I mean, you know, I, I assume that they're. I think so. Yeah, you know, that, that's always been my, uh, I don't know if you've seen this or not, but, you know, when um, people use like Canva or something like that, and then one yeah. author uses one set of, set of graphics, and then the next yeah. author uses the same, and it's like, ooh. It's true. Sometimes it's like carbon copies of the same cover almost. Yeah. You know, that can happen, but, uh, huh. I wouldn't have guessed that. And that's very cool. It costs you 25 bucks, huh? Yeah. Hmm. Nothing, nothing like saving some money. Exactly. <laughs> and I was shocked because I wasn't, I wasn't expecting a cover to be that like, um, well-made. <laughs> I was expecting, uh, I don't know cut corners <laughs> to be honest with you i wasn't expecting something so fantastic yeah huh. so they actually make it you just give them kind of what you want and, and they make it for you or do you have to go yeah. in and, and drag and drop nope you uh you tell them uh your design that you want you give them um you know the parameters or whatever and uh they work with you and um you have revision they can do revisions and stuff if you're not happy with it um they work they work closely together with you to uh create the cover that you want huh i'm gonna check that out right after we get done here cool <laughs> very cool very cool i got i actually have a cover for that for for vela <laughs> that i want to put out that's awesome so, it should be i hope but if i can just get a few things uh lined up i'm going to start doing doing that to hopefully have a, a series out there for when that whole thing opens up mm -hmm. so my luck they'll cancel it <laughs> i'll be like oh, that would be 
no, awful. They're not going to cancel. They put an awful lot of no. money into it, but it is, it is really cool. I would check that out when we get done. But mm-hmm. so I guess, uh, um, do you have anything else you want to tell your readers or fans or anything like that? Um, I should, but I don't. Okay. You know what you all should do? You all should read all of her books because they look completely awesome. Um, you know, you have Impure and you have a, a few other series and anthologies that uh, that you can check out. Also, if you like uh, children's books, she's got How, Am I, How I'm Feeling, which I might actually buy that for myself because I never know how I'm feeling. <laughs> um, you know, and I guess that's one question we could kind of finish up with is uh, you do children's books too. I do. Yeah. So, uh, so how'd you get into that? Uh, I have a nephew. He's six years old. Um, and it's a challenge to get him to want to read because the subjects, the subject out there aren't interesting to him. Yeah. So I try to create books that would interest him. <laughs> what is in the shoe? It's a Halloween book. I see that. They're all for, you know, they're all short little yeah. easy reader books. I'm sorry. Except the, the, uh, the Caden fights the evil Dr. Pizza. Yep. That one, that one looks like a, like a good one to me too. Hey. <laughs> so are these gra- My are nephew's these- named Caden, so. Oh, is it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so did you, uh, um, are they all graphical or I haven't looked at that one? I'll yeah, they're all, in. they're all pictures. They're all pictures? Yeah. How hard is that? I got the pictures off of Shutterstock. And uh, it was easy enough. Yeah? Yeah. Did you do the layout yourself or did you have somebody else do it? I had somebody else do it. Okay. Is that uh, for a children's book, what's that run? To have somebody else do that, uh, the, uh, the layout for you? Uh, it cost me like 40 bucks. 40 bucks. 40 bucks. Sweet. Yeah, on Fiverr. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah, Fiverr is the tool of choice for a lot of people. It is. It's a fantastic tool of choice. <laughs> there are a lot of people in other countries that uh, that will do things for in- incredibly cheap rates. Sometimes it's not good work, but most of the time it's, it's pretty good. Mm-hmm. And the nice thing with Fiverr is that if you really don't like what they did, you don't have to pay for it. It's true. You can cancel the order, which uh, I've had to do a couple of times. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you kind of wait to see what you get. And then all of a sudden it's like, okay, this is good. Or if it's bad and they don't want to redo it, it's like, yeah, okay. You don't get paid. You know, yeah. Sorry. Mm-hmm. So um, I know a lot of people have had, uh, say they've had really bad luck with it. I had to pay for this and it was just horrible. It's like, why'd you pay for it? You didn't have to pay. <laughs> that doesn't sound like a Fiverr problem. That sounds like a you problem. But you yeah, know. You, you didn't do a dispute or whatever. Yeah, whatever. But anyway, all right. Well, with that, I'm going to go ahead and call this uh, this podcast to a close real quick. Um, <laughs> I'm really happy about that. I'm sorry. No, no. <laughs> I'm just being enthusiastic for those of you who are not seeing the video she i said we're gonna en- go ahead and end this podcast and she gave me two thumbs up <laughs> like, yes get the hell off my computer no <laughs> i'm just joshing you i'm just teasing you all right I hope so <laughs> <laughs> i am hey uh uh kids if you uh if you wouldn't mind uh go and uh check out uh sydney's uh uh, author page links will be below and also to her website and uh, look at some of these books they are going to be great and hopefully we'll see her in Icarus uh the, around the first part of may but other than that i want to say this is jeff with the diy writer podcast and i hope you have a great day keep your chin up even in quebec things are going to get better i promise they have to anyway bye bye Please hit the subscribe button. I get a bonus for every subscriber and I only need 1,506 more to become a full-time paid employee. Help me please.